Weird Tales, May 1923, Volume 1, Number 3. Greetings, dear listeners. We're back again to examine the third issue of Weird Tales. Weird Tales, the unique magazine, Number 3, May 1923. So, what's in this month's edition? Again, we see some familiar names from earlier issues. Julian Kilman, Hamilton Craigie, and Laurie McClintock and Cole Pepper Chun. Cole Pepper Chun, who complete their frightful mystery novel, The Whispering Thing, the first part of which appeared in the April 1923 edition. Let's have a look at the table of contents. Aha! Nineteen thrilling short stories, two complete novelettes, two two-part stories, interesting, odd, and weird happenings. The Moon Terror by A.G. Birch, a remarkable novel. The Secret Fear by Kenneth Dwayne Whipple, a creepy detective story. Jungle Beasts, Jungle Beasts by William P. Barron, a complete novelette. Sorry, I have trouble saying beasts, <laughs> as you just heard. The Golden Caverns by Julian Kilman, a condensed novel. Vials of Insects by Paul Ellsworth Treem, short story. An Eye for an Eye by G. W. Crane, short story. The Floor Above by M. Humphreys, a short story with a horrifying climax. Penelope by Vincent Sterrett, a fantastic tale. The Purple Heart by Herman Sisk, the story of a haunted cabin. Feline by Bruce Grant, a whimsical storyette. Two Hours of Death by E. Thales Emmons, a ghost story. Midnight Black by Hamilton Craigie, short story. The Haunted and the Haunters by Bulwer Lytton, an old masterpiece. The Whispering Thing by Laurie McClintock and Culpepper Chun, the conclusion of a frightful mystery novel. The Death Cell by F. K. Moss, a weird short story. The Devil Plant by Lyle Wilson Holden, a story of ghastly retribution. The Thunder Voice by F. Walter Wilson, the story of a hairy monster. Case number 27 by Molly Frank Ellis, A Few Minutes in a Madhouse. The Finale by William Merritt, A Short Story. And finally, The Closed Cabinet, which is either by Unknown or Anonymous, and which is described as A Story of the 18th Century. Two of these stories stand out for me. The first is The Floor Upstairs, a subtle and creepy, and creepy, that's the appropriate term, a subtle and creepy ghost story told in diary format. It was apparently a favorite of H.P. Lovecraft. Strangely, nothing is known of the author M. Humphreys. And by nothing, I mean nothing. As this is a very well-constructed ghost story, that had me mystified until the end. The best guess, my best guess, is that M. or M. L. Humphreys was a pseudonym. If anyone listening has any information as to the author's identity, please share your knowledge with the rest of us in the comments section below. The other name I recognized was that of Bulwer Lytton, author of The Haunted and the Haunters, which Weird Tales describes as an old masterpiece. So, who was Bulwer Lytton? Edward George Earl Lytton, Bulwer Lytton, first Baron Lytton, was a British member of Parliament who, as Secretary of State for the Colonies, wanted to turn 
Canada's British Columbia into, quote, a second England on the shores of the Pacific, end of quote. He was a prolific Victorian novelist. His Wikipedia entry states, quote, Bulwer Lytton's works were well known in his time. He coined famous phrases like, Pursuit of the Almighty Dollar. The pen is mightier than the sword. Dweller on the threshold. The great unwashed. And the opening phrase, It was a dark and stormy night. The sardonic Bulwer-Lytton fiction contest, held annually since 1982, claims to seek the opening sentence of the worst of all possible novels. In other words, the worst opening sentence you can write. The novel, in which the opening phrase, It was a dark and stormy night appears, was Bulwer-Lytton's 1830 novel, Paul Clifford. The author lived between 1803 and 1873. The Haunted and the Haunters was written in 1859 and is sometimes known as The House and the Brain. In spite of its age, Victorian trapping, and an overly convoluted plot, the story held my interest, especially the opening section where the narrator and his manservant explore the haunted house after dark and are subjected to a variety of ghostly phenomena. As in The Floor Above, the ending of The Haunted and the Haunters took me by surprise. I first encountered this story in an old paperback called Basil Rathbone Selects Strange Tales, the cover of which had a ghoulish-looking picture of Basil's decapitated head. In that collection, the story was known as The House in the Brain. If you're unfamiliar with the story, I put links to the text in the description. I've also put links to some excellent audio recordings of the story by Bite Size Audio and Edward E. French. A very similar story to The Haunted and the Haunters is The Empty House by Algernon Blackwood. I've put links to Horror Babble's recording of The Empty House in the description as well as links to their recordings of the floor above. And of course, in the description, there are links to all the stories mentioned in today's video. But what about you, dear listeners? Recognize any of the authors or titles listed in the table of contents? Have you ever read any of them? If so, please tell us about it below. I plan to continue my exploration of weird tales month by month. Won't you join me as we work our way through 1923? If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the Night Floaters, Werewolves, and the Black-Eyed Children. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,500 subs. Till midnight. Cheers. Pictures used in today's video, courtesy of Pix here, that's P-X here, while the music was the classic Ghost Processional, perfect weird tales music, by that patron of the internet, Kevin McLeod. <laughs>